right, we're back. Doing so, stuff. So, uh, good thing to have, actually, is uh, one of those shrines is inside Hyrule Castle. Hyrule Castle. Nice. So we have an insertion point. So that's really nice. <gasps> yeah. Oh, wait, we may actually need to no. detour to the Deku Tree for a minute. I don't know how many Korok seeds I've got. Oh, we, okay. might, could, we might could just get a new slot. Ah, new slot. Um, which are which are really useful. But... Okay, so Dark Cloud. Yes. Dark Cloud, your character doesn't level up. For anyone who may have missed the last episode, we're going down Game Informer's list of top hundred RPGs. List of top hundred RPGs. Seeing while whether or not I've game. heard of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dark Cloud uh, is a game where you don't level up; your weapons level up. Oh. Okay. Um, so, so it's a it's a dungeon crawler. You go through the dungeons, you get weapons, you level up your weapons. Your character actually never levels up. You never get, but your but your weapons and your armor and stuff have. Mm, that might be twirl. Get something. Your weapons and armor have um, stat boosts and stuff on them, so you'll get like extra defense or extra life or whatever. And you just go nice. through the dungeon and do stuff, and it's it's really cool. Like it's really interesting, and then it's got like a town building aspect to it. Um, because you go through the dungeon to like grab people's uh, pieces of uh, like their houses that have like been stolen by like this god or something like what? that. And so like you Why have to like go house? get go get their house. It's like it's like all of existence got wiped except uh, for you. And so you've okay. got to go find it and like put it oh, back in the world. This is a neat thing to discover that shrine in here. Mm -hmm. We gotta like you the, have to light the big one. Light the big one. It's just like the harbor, so that's kind of like their lighthouse sort of thing. Except it's underground. Underground so it really work. But it, it's a neat concept. Um, and then Lost Odyssey. Uh, I've heard of it. I never played it. It was written by it, the Final it. Fantasy by Final Fantasy founding father uh, Hironobu uh, Sakaguchi. Wow. Um, it's a story intensive turn based JRPG. Neat. Um, and so it's supposed to be really good. Uh, <laughs> but so uh, I never played it. The best way to get here, honestly, is there's an entrance on the outside of the castle. Yeah. You can uh, come. The best way to really do this is to come from the backside across the mountain, go down, get the High Highland Shield from Balaka, and then you go up to Princess Zelda's study, ah. get that memory, and then you come in down this way, which leads you. To the library! That was not a very good reveal since it, it said it down at the bottom left. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, there's, there's guys here. I didn't know it was going to be God, no! Stop! Stop jumping, jumping around! Um, and it goes in your face. Uh, next one, number 95, is The World Ends With You. I've heard a, of that. A uh -huh. very angsty oh, square game. Um, came out for the DS. Uh, now. Once again, like I said, it's very angsty. Never played it, always heard it was really good. You can get it for like 20 bucks at GameStop if you can find it. You can get it for like 20 bucks on Amazon if you can find it. Uh, number 94 is Golden Sun. Uh, half played Golden Sun. I've never it, actually been able to get a hold of it, that to play it. It's really fun. Uh, you can get it on the Wii U now. Oh, that's, one of their, good. that's good to know. One of their things. So we could actually play it on the show. We have to play it on the show. Uh, it's would really like, good. Would you like to play that one, Jay? Yes, I would, actually. It's a really fun game. Um, it's, uh, you, there's, there's, uh, djinn, which are just, like, elemental spirits, uh, that you can get. Everybody has, like, an affinity toward certain spirits, but if you give them, you can give them the spirits as, like, uh, thing, where they can use magic. Um, so, like, somebody's got, like, earth affinity, but you give them, um, like a water spirit, like they might, they'll get new magic that they wouldn't get if you gave them earth spirits. Uh, and the more spirits you give them, like the higher magic they get. You try to match up types and mix and match. There's yeah, lots okay. of like micromanagement with it. It's really cool. Um, Sounds really neat. It's I've, really interesting. I've always heard good things, and a lot of people wanted the guy from that to be in the uh, the Smash roster when Smash Four came around. And they were doing oh, yeah? character voting. Yeah, he's like he's he's really they're really cool. Really cool game. <laughs> Um, Pillars of Eternity is number 93. Um, Sounds like a start. I've actually never heard of this. Uh, oh, it's, uh, okay, so I'm just gonna read you what it says here. Alright. Uh, riffing off this, it's for PC, Mac, and Linux, uh, or Linux. Uh, riffing off the success of Baldur's Gate, 
in Icewind Dale well over a decade earlier, Pillars of Eternity was a clarion call that the party-based isometric RPG was once again on the rise. It's made by Obsidian. Uh, they do good stuff. It's an, it's an epic. It established my a, favorite call out. a rule set and universe of its own while also presenting a memorable story filled with nuanced characters and challenging battles. So apparently it's kind of like Baldur's Gate. Um, Baldur's Gate's good. I, I really like do. They've got, a really, they've got a lot of really great game design in yeah. Baldur's Gate. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard it's really Like, good. especially self-inclusive dungeons that, like, all the lore you need to know about that dungeon it's is all included the in the dungeon. That's really cool. Aside from maybe, like, the initial quest to get you there. Yeah. Yay. Just kind of start getting all the book and things on the Um, next one. Uh, Tactics Ogre. Let us, let us Oh, yeah. Together. Tactics Ogre basically started and those the, are, the whole tactics genre. And those are, those are supposed to be those really good. Real good. Um, number 91 is Bastion. Uh, which is fantastic. Bastion has been released for more platforms than anything else in this entire list, I think. Wow. Uh, PS4, Xbox One, 360, Vita, PC, Mac, Linux, and iOS. Bastion on iOS? Yeah. Neat. Yeah. Like, it's really cool. Like, it's a really good game. Lots of customizable things you can do. It doesn't get, like, too micromanaging. Uh, but it's really good. It's really fun. Yeah, um, I've played it before. The story like is good. Uh, I've got it on Steam if you want to play it on the show at any point. I've, I've got it. I've got it on my PS4. So we both have it. Yay. And on PS4. I got it for free. It's free on PS4. It's free on PS4 for anybody that would like to play it. Oh, really? 100% free on PS4. That is nice. Um, yeah, uh, Super Giant's awesome. Uh, um, and if you like Bastion, go play Transistor. Uh, Transistor is one that we also have. I heard that, that is played. very good. Uh, it's, to me, it's better than Bastion. Um, but it's, it's different. Check it out. We got the, oh, yeah, we got the Guardian Arrow. The Guardian Arrow is nice. Kill oh, that wow. thing right there. Yeah, yeah it's going. Boom. Uh, the next one is and it rains uh, Panzer Dragoon Saga, um, which was released for the Saturn. Uh, never had a Saturn. Never played this game. Nope. Uh, if we could ever find a Saturn and play this, it'd probably be pretty interesting. Uh, did the Saturn use um, cartridges still, or did they move the CD? Yes, the, the Saturn did. It Dreamcast be, was the first one that did see it. It may be on the Retron then, if we decide one. Possibly. Possibly. Uh, so we might be able to get that and play it. Let's see. Uh, the first Panzer Dragoon games were on rail shooters. Uh, so Sega was like, like, yeah, the we're going to think that it would be. Sega was like, yeah, we're going to make the next one an RPG. <laughs> and so they made the next one an RPG. Um, it got a cult following. It has an epic story about a vanished civilization. Uh, it's got 360 degree battles. Uh, that mixed real time and turn based, and you got a pet dragon who evolved throughout your journey ah, based on your cool. actions. Where's my, where's my, oh, my boat? Did you hear that last one? Yes, it is. That's really cool. Pet dragon. Really awesome. Kill that turret. Yes, you did. Quickly. And these um, guardians are like actual literal turrets that are folded down. And wow. Everything. Oh yeah, yeah. It didn't have a. It was different too. Yay! Death. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, I'm gonna fight him. I'm gonna fail, I'm gonna fail! Um, but that was number 90, so that was for the first. The, the last shot here, I thought it'd be good. There we go. Uh, number 89 Tales of Symphonia. Good game. Um, yeah, it's supposed to. The Tales games are good, even if they're not super in story. Yeah. I think they're good RPGs. Uh, combat and party bonding is what Tales is all about. Yeah. It's all about learning your characters, loving your characters, and then making them fight. And watching them <laughs> die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because somebody will die. Um, uh, Radiata Stories is number 88. Uh, Radiata never Stories. never heard of that. It's Hi there. I think it's like a taxi. Wow. Maybe he, he, he took all three of those and just died. Wow. I think Radiata Stories is more like a tactics game. Uh, you have 177 allies to collect. Woo! Each boy. with their own lives, jobs, store, uh, lives, jobs, homes, and routines. Jeez. Your protagonist's name is the whitest name you can think of. Jack Russell. He's a terrier. <laughs> um. So dumb. 
the narrative forks about two thirds of the way through, so New Game Plus is actually a very viable thing in this game. Interesting. Um, uh, so in, it'll dramatically uh, affect your events, allies, and outcomes in a completely different place, depending on what you choose and who you get to keep and all that kind of stuff. Cool stuff. Interesting. Um, number 87, Vagrant Story, which we talked about this the other day. It's set in Ivalice with 12, with Final Fantasy 12 and Final Fantasy Tactics. It's uh, somewhere along that store, along that um, line, but it's not actually a Final Fantasy game. Uh, it's supposed to be really good. Um, oh boy! Oh boy! No! Oh boy! No! Oh boy. no. There's a Lionel that just spawned. Oh gosh! He's just like here. Oh hi, buddy. Uh, we're gonna do this real quick. Yeah, and stay up, stay up, stay up. Ouch! Ouch! The thunder spill broke. Something shot at us. I don't like that. There. PC, Mac, Amiga, Apple II, Commodore 64, and the PC 9800. Uh, 9, 9, the frick is an Amiga? Oh, an Amiga? It was just a really old console. Ah, really old. Uh, I think it was like a like uh, a, like a nice. home computer. Just, but it was they just give us some knowledge. That's really cool. Uh, it was a gold box Dang. game from Strategic Simulations Incorporated. Uh, it adapted the AD&D rule set. Uh, and it was exploration and combat. You explored in a first person perspective, like the really old RPGs. Um, top down combat mode demanded strategy and smart character usage. Uh, you had character export, uh, which let you carry your party forward to sell oh, games. Wow. We got, we got. That's like the very first time that was ever used. Ow, ow, on fire, fire. Back in night. Fire, fire! 1988, they decided, hey, these people like their characters, let's let them move to a different game with their characters. Oh, 1988. Wow. Yeah. I know, you would think that that would be like a decently new thing. You like, know? at least mid-90s. Yeah. <coughs> did that turret over there got damaged in our fight with line out so So he's not happy with it. You are dying. Number 85. Might and Magic, World of Zine. Released in 94. It's um, all about writing magazines. It's <laughs> a really <laughs> underwhelming entry into the Might and Magic series. Uh, it, uh, it combines uh, Might and Magic 4 and 5. Um, one huge title, single disc. It's a dungeon crawling party based romp. Um, pretty much you just fight a bunch of things. Uh, number 84, Horizon Zero Dawn. Which I still haven't played yet. It's a good game. Go play it. You fight. You fight robot. I've still not figured out the story yet. I just kind of quit playing it. It's playing Persona 5. I'll eventually get back <laughs> into playing it. Um, number 83, Xenoblade Chronicles. Supposed to be really good. Yeah, that's uh, pretty good. Never finished it. A falling star. Um, yeah, a falling star. And here we are invading a castle. I think. Can't I think it. the reason that Xenoblade Chronicles did so well is because the JRPG genre was like dying, it was. and it breathed new life into it. But it really I really it. Uh, so it was like, whoa, oh, hey, hey, a treasure chest, What's hey, in the box. Uh, so Xenoblade Chronicles, uh, go play bomb, it. More bomb you can get it for the Wii U, the Wii, and the new 3DS. Yep, only new 3DS, it won't run on yeah, the Yeah, it won't ro ro roll, it will not run on the, it'll run on the new 2DS that's coming out. Which bugs me, because they got rid of the, they got rid of the one feature that made it different, that it didn't, like, flat closed. Well, that got rid of, yeah, well, yeah, yeah I see what you're saying, yeah, yeah. And the, the no, the no 3D. Well, I mean, that was the whole point of the, the no 3D, specifically, was but, yeah. I know, it was, well, it was, it was more for, like, kids, like, it was supposed to be, like, more, It was better for kids, yeah. and for people with, uh, 
little kids with epileptic tendencies or anything like that. Yeah. Kind of them getting All right. seizures from the uh, Well, next time on Crapshoot, we'll finish climbing these stairs, we'll get to the top, and we'll find some more things. Uh, talk to more about RPGs. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.